The inverted yield curve flips back. The Fed's also cut rates twice. We're going to talk about the flipping of the inverted yield curve and why it's important to note how the market is now acting following the first two rate cuts. In white, those are the Fed funds. In blue, that's a 10-year U.S. Treasury. Now, the Federal Reserve cut rates for the first time, 50 basis points in September, another quarter point about a week ago. And since that first cut in September, 10-year U.S. Treasury yields have been skyrocketing. We're going to show you in just a minute why this is kind of troubling. Now, the inverted bond market has flipped back. We had an inverted bond market for an unprecedented amount of time. It's now uh, not inverted, meaning the longer term yields are higher than short term. And it's important to note how the inverted yield curve ended. We'll show you in white. Again, those are the Fed funds. One year U.S. Treasury, that's in yellow. That moves closest with the anticipation of future interest rate decisions. Those are the short term maturities. Longer term maturities, the blue line, 10 year U.S. Treasury, that moves more under the anticipation of long term economic prospects. Now, specifically, one year U.S. Treasury yield is now kind of flat. Notice a blue line, that's the 10 year, that was below, that was inverted. And now cross back above. At the moment, we actually have what's known as a flat yield curve, where long and short term bond maturities have more or less the same yield. It's not a condition that usually lasts very long, and it's usually a sign of something big to come. But overall, the 10 year yields following the first rate cut, they send us a message. What we've done is we've gone back in time, we've looked at prior cycles when the Federal Reserve cut rates for the first time in every cycle, making note of how the 10-year bond yields acted for the first 50 or 60 days following the first rate cut. That x-axis at the bottom, that's the number of days since the first Fed cut. Now, for example, in 2007, Federal Reserve first cut interest rates, and about 50 days after that first cut, 10-year yields were down 6%, 6% from where they were at the Fed cut. 2019, about 50 or 60 days after the first Fed cut, 10-year yields were down 14%. Now, more or less, they're either flat or slightly to the downside. That's what history shows us, except for now. In 2024, following the first Fed cut in September, 10-year yields are up 21%. Here's a dilemma. Yields are rising under the perception of a strong economy. Now, we may not believe it's a strong economy. We look at the manufacturing numbers and the jobs numbers, but the fact of the matter is a bond market and the overall economy, there is the perception that things are improving. The Fed is cutting interest rates into a hot market, and this is what's troubling. We just got out of an inflationary cycle. And the Federal Reserve, they see the negative. They see the jobs numbers. They see slow manufacturing. Now, I know they said they weren't too concerned about it during the last Fed cut, but they are cutting rates. And they're cutting rates into a strong stock market, into a strong yield curve. Speaking of inflation, by the way, Wednesday, CPI, Thursday, PPI, it'll be very important to see not only what the results are of these numbers, but more importantly, how does a 10-year yield act? You know, let's make a note and revisit this after the inflation numbers are released. If the 10-year yield is up after these numbers are released, it shows us that the perception of inflation, it could be back. Prediction is we may not be at the end of this inflationary battle, especially taking into consideration that, you know, the Federal Reserve has now cut 75 basis points into a red-hot stock market and a very strong 10-year yield. By the way, we just published in our uh, Just the Data uh, Substack blog a new article. We'll provide the link in the description. It's absolutely free to read as well. We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.